my guys. Happy Saturday. Yeah, happy Saturday. So, <laughs> ridiculous. Alright, so I'm very glad that you guys like the um, Belial or Bal. Bal, however you say that name. I still can't say that name. I dreamt about it and I was pronouncing it wrong in my dreams too. So I'm very pissed off about that. <laughs> so, um, today, on to the greater key of Solomon, which it's pretty, pretty interesting. It still coincides and goes with, this is part five of what we have been going over. Very, very awesome stuff. Very amazing stuff. So, all right, so the greater key of Solomon is readily available at any metaphysical bookstore and occult shops. All right, so it is fascinating that many occultists all right, and occultist is in parentheses, or quotation marks. A claim that the lesser key deals with evil spirits and the greater key deals with good ones. All right, so, no, this is totally wrong. So this is merely a repetition of what other ill-informed writers have claimed. There is not one bit of proof that one key deal deals with evil spirits and the other deals with good ones. So. Like I said, they're all daemons. That's that's a very good thing. So, the greater key is divided into two major sections or books. So, we all know that. The second of these books describes the various tools or weapons of the magician, including several which do not seem appropriate for the practice of high magic at all. Yeah, you guys, if you guys have read it, and yes, yeah, so, but this is necessary as the first book of the greater key is a combination of high and low magical methods. As an example of the latter, the greater key includes a method of making oneself invisible using a small image of yellow wax in the form of a man. So, lots of magic to be found in that book. And honestly, I don't have that book. I thought I did, but I don't. I'll get it. So, this type of magic, or image magic, sometimes calls poppet magic, is not in the repertoire of most Kabbalistic magicians. So this is far more in the realm of natural or low magic. I don't know why they keep referring to natural or low magic. I mean, low magic, high magic, it's all magic. It all works. So, so it is because there are natural magic methods in this grimoire, along with the lack of appeal to Jesus and the Trinity, which gives in internal evidence of an earlier date for the greater key than the lesser key. Alright, so the greater key is older than the lesser key. I thought they were both like, put written together, so I'm not sure. So in fact, the earliest written versions of the greater key date from the 15th or 16th centuries. Those were two great centuries. So, while the earliest copies of the lesser key are from the 17th century, another great century, I'm very old, wow. Of course, oral versions of both of the books may go back much further, and earlier manuscripts and manuscript forms of these books may still be discovered. So this did happen with a grimoire called the Picatrix. I like that, Picatrix. Which has never been translated into English. It was that thought to be a typical example of writing from the Middle Ages. Recent discoveries show it to be a translation of a much earlier Arabic work. Wow, that's interesting. It's, yeah, I find these grimoires all over the place. I have one, and that is completely, that is as far as I will go, and that's the, um, what book is it? Elvis Levi book, um, The Greater, no. What is that book called? The Doctrine and Ritual of High Magic. So that's a very, very good grimoire. Very good grimoire. But yeah, they are so damn expensive. Anywhere you look, I mean anywhere. Even on like Amazon and eBay, these books are expensive. So, alright. So naturally it is not my desire to recopy the entire Key of Solomon here. However, the evocational conjurations are similar in form to those of the Lesser Key, as given earlier in this lesson. So thus, you, should, you could use the evocations from the Lesser Key by changing the phrase spirit ball, as in the earlier example for Angelo so-and-so, angel so-and-so. <laughs> I know that this may infuriate some purists, 
but the technique and philosophy are the same. So if you want to drag yourself through five single space pages of evocations, uh, such are given in the greater key, you may be my guest. <laughs> I love this guy's writing. He is amazing. His everything just makes perfect sense. Wow, 85 degrees. It's not, not very uh, cool in here. So in the greater key, uh, we are again confronted with a puzzle to our understanding, a puzzle obviously created to fool those without training. So look between, read between the lines, literally, literally. So uh, between books one and two of the greater key is a section filled with pentacles and how they can bring you various powers and abilities. So this seems to imply that they are actually talismans. However, if you go through book one and actually study the evocations, you will see that the magician is told to show the pentacles to the spirit which appears and demand all that he shall wish from the king of the spirits. So as you can see, implying that these symbolic figures are talismans is a cover to prevent their true potential from falling into the hands of the untrained and unprepared. So, what do you guys think about that? I think that's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I love it. I do. So, below is a pentacle associated with the sun, which would be for tomorrow, Sunday. So, its purpose is to free you from thought patterns. Ooh, I just got a special offer from Hemp Bombs. Ooh, I wonder if it's medical or if it's just CBD. If it's CBD, I don't want it. Alright, anyways. Sorry. Where'd I go? What was I even talking about? The pentacle. Alright, so, it's actually a talisman. Alright, so, um, for the sun. So, its purpose is to free you from thought patterns which keep you from achieving your desires. Huh. Perfect. How perfect. Uh, the evocation should be done on the day and hour of the sun. So, tomorrow, if so done, the entity which appears will tell you how to break your mental bonds and be free. So, in your evocation, use the term Lord yod heh vav heh instead of spirit Baal. It's kind of contradicting, contradictory to, to me, uh, using the names of God from the Bible, which, I mean, the God of the Bible <clears throat> is very evil, um, very, it's full of contradictions. Um, if, you know, it just doesn't make any sense anymore. It's, it's bringing up even more questions for me. So, um, say for instance, since, you know, Lucifer was cast out, supposedly, supposedly this happened. I highly doubt it did. I think it's just a v somebody's vivid imagination and, um, the whole psychedelics. It has to be. Um, Terrence McKenna, I think would agree on that. Definitely. If you are, you know, eating psychedelics. I mean, I've talked to a clothes amber, clothes basket before on very heavy drugs, but I don't think this kind of drug was around when Jesus actually walked the earth, if he actually did. So if <coughs> God of the Bible is supposed to be all loving and all good, then he should know no evil. Correct? Correct. All good. All pure. So he is, he's not all good. Not all pure. He knows evil. If he is not to prevent, if he can't prevent all evil, he is not all good or all powerful. So, it, it's, it's very, very contradicting to me. Um, I'm finding more questions with um, ceremonial magic that I just don't care for. Especially the Lesser Key of Sun, or not the Lesser Key, but <sighs> the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. You're calling on, you know, different... Uh, yeah, the Archangels, which I do not think, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, I mean, Lucifer was cast out, supposedly, and then, you know, became pure evil, but he was an angel. So how is, how can you go from being an angel to pure, pure evil? You, you can't, you, you still have that side of you. So it's just very complicated and it's bugging me. So... Alright, so yeah, so you're gonna, yeah, Lord yad heh vav -Heh, and that is God, the Christian God, instead of Baal. I would rather actually go with Baal, or replace these names, I don't know. I mean, if it works, God, I am really hot. 
I mean, if it works, good for you. Good for these people. But, I mean, I'm just having a hard time believing all this now. Especially with the Bible. Because I just, I don't see how an evil God can actually, would actually help us. An evil God would not help us. Alright, so here is the pentagram, the pentagram for Sunday. And that is what we just talked about. So you would actually vibrate the name Yod Lord Yod -Heh Vav -Heh instead of Spirit Baal in your evocation. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I want to evoke uh, the God of the Bible since he is so evil and negative. I don't. I just don't like it. It's very interesting, though, isn't it? How is that even? That's not even right. It's just. It makes no sense. Total contradiction. So. Alright, now, below is a pentacle for controlling the spirits of Venus. Ooh. And you guys know my love and fondness of Venus. So, it would be good for any... It would be uh, it would be good for any of the purposes listed under Venus on the talismanic magical chart. So, you would want to use the name of the appropriate archangel. Instead of a spirit ball, evoke the spirit of Venus, the archangel amongst others. So, ask if... Oh, and ask of it what you will, uh, as is appropriate to the planet. Of course, do the evocation during the hour of Venus, and if possible, on the day of Venus. Yesterday, Friday, was the day. No, today is the day of Venus. I don't know. Yesterday or today. So, now we have the Sigil for Venus, which is the Pentacle of Venus. Wait a minute. Where am I going? It's on that page. So, it's that one. So I don't know. I'm just trying to I'm trying to make the connection between uh, the names of God, the Christian God, and old ancient pagan gods and goddesses because they came first. So I, I just I'm very confused now. All right. So on the top of the next page is another pentacle associated with Venus. So its purpose is to evoke the spirit Yon El to give you information on how to obtain grace and honor. So Yon El comes from the Hebrew outside the central figure Yud, Vav, Nun, Aleph, and uh, Lamed. So, all right, now that's the other one at the top right there. Hmm. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. All right, so finally the pentacle below is another one of Venus. Its purpose is to learn from Angel. Monakiel? Sounds like Mike Mikael, Mikael, but it's Mon Monakiel. How to it, it, how to attract love? God, <laughs> that's the very bottom right there on this page. So that's the very bottom one. So yeah, it's to attract love. But I'm still, I'm very, very, I don't understand why. What do these names of God have so much power for? Why? Why are there so much names power in these names? If it's a Christian concept, it's inherently negative. I mean, it's purely evil. So I'm not 100% sure. Hell if I know. No pun intended. So, now, here is some very good information as well. So, I wish to... Uh, recreate here that the magical evocation is not just working with your fantasies and imagination. Neither is it is it neither is it a type of spiritism <clears throat> which seeks contact with any dead souls or entities which happen to be nearby. Rather, it is a very real method of making contact with entities on a higher level of existence. All right, so that makes more sense. Higher entities, so they don't necessarily have to be pre or Christian in origin. I mean, obviously they're not. Alright, so, um, they are always here, so it is usually uh, we who are not aware of them, so, true. In magical evocation, we are not only, uh, we not only become aware of them, but we choose with whom of the, the maraud, of the entities available, we desire contact. Alright, so, I'm going to have to do some research on this, because something is just not adding up. 
So in the greater key, we obtain some specialized information which is not in the lesser key, and we can assume that it is specifically for use with greater key entities. So both books, com they, they're complementary for each other. So you obviously have to have both books. So when doing evocations from the greater key, there is a slight there is a slightly different method for using the pentacle. So after using the pentacle to focus your attention, don't confuse this with your magical tool, the earth pentacle, cover the pentacle so that it cannot be seen. Usually a piece of black silk is used for this purpose. All right, now that, that I've heard of, that I've done. So then when the entity appears in your magic mirror, show the pentacle to the entity. The result is that the entity will be bound by your will. All right, so if we are binding Christian, and Catholic entities, well, I guess that's good. I mean, they're archangels, angels are, yeah. I mean, if you really look into the Bible and look and read, angels are scary. I mean, they have the flaming swords and they kill people, just like the Christian God. So the result is the entity will be bound by your will. All right, we will use this technique in a similar way, but for another purpose in a, le a later lesson. Alright, so before going on to another aspect of evocative, ma evocative, whatever, evo evocation magic, there's another bush, bush, oh my god, another book I wish to mention in passing. This is a book which was apparently used as a source, a book by a branch of the Golden Dawn, known as the Alpha and Omega. Huh, the name of the book, which was translated by Mathers, is the Grimoire of Armadale. That is a very close to Amenadiel. It's very close to Amenadiel. Wow. All right, so this unusual book, ooh, though still in print, is mostly ignored by magicians because they do not understand or dare not try magic of evocation. Huh. Its internal structure references to Jesus throughout the book indicate a later work than the greater key. In fact, some of the names of the spirits in this book seem uh, to be simil similar to those of both the lesser and greater keys, and another work known as the Arbitral of Magic. Hmm. Alright, so that kind of makes more sense. If you're binding these angelic entities, I, I don't know. I don't know. I would have to associate them with the pagan gods that they're associated with through analogy, through Christianity, and yuck. <laughs> All right, so the seals or sigils in the grimoire of Armadale are far more involved than most other works of this genre. Unless you buy the book and work to understand it, they are rather unus unusable. So this book does not even bother to give outrageous methods to draw a magic circle. Rather, it merely says to see that circle be correctly formed according to the instructions we have elsewhere given. Hmm. Different. Very different. So the meanings of the seals and the purposes of using them are hidden in abstruse, abstruse language. After reading this lesson, you should be able to discern the meanings and see through the veils to the uninitiated. So, <clears throat> if you do buy or already have this book, simply remember that the purpose of evo evocation magic is to allow yourself to see into the astral plane and communicate with entities who can answer questions and give instructions according to their nature. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I buy into that. I'm not 100% sure. It just, it's the Christian aspect that's just, it's really bugging me. So, hmm. Although the grimoire of Armadale does not have instructions on how to make the magic circle, it does have the same kind of protection rituals and conjurations as given in other grimoires of this nature, such as the greater and lesser keys. So, curiously, this book also has some heavily disguised information on sex magic toward the end. There will be more on sex magic later in this lesson, alright, so that makes more sense. A lot more sense, in a way. So, alright, part six. So. Unless you are totally new to magic and occultism, you have probably heard of entities known as elementals. Alright, now we're getting back to the pagan. The paganism. So, and if you have a little more knowledge, you probably know that there are different types of elementals. Each type is associated with a different element. So, the elements of earth, we all know are gnomes. 
Uh, the element of spirits of air are the sliffs. The elements, elemental spirits of water are the undines. And the elemental spirits of fire are the salamanders. So we all know that. Right? I hope. Right, so these natural elements, elementals, are quite unique. So here on the physical plane, everything is made of a combination of elements. But the elementals are totally composed of only one element. So you can actually equate that with the tarot card. All the aces are pure elemental energy before they're given form. So, thus, they can rarely be seen on this plane except within their element. Salamanders can sometimes seem be seen weaving around a roaring fire. I have actually, yeah, I've seen that. Sorry, guys. Alright, so, sliffs can sometimes be seen as sparkles in the air on a clear day. Also, I think we've all seen that. So the proper place for describing entities whose main appearance is on other planes will come in another lesson. Further, the length of this course does not allow time for learning to do magic with the aid of the elementals. However, there is something which uses a creation similar to elementals. And which forms are an important part of your magical circulum. curriculum. So it is also known as the creation of artificial elementals. That's fun. That's fun. So an artificial elemental is something which by which you, by force of will and magical techniques, create to do your will in a sense. This is a type of evocation. Another way of looking at an artificial element is that they are a type of talismanic magic without the talisman. So, literally, um, uh, a little spirit helper. So that's good. That's really good. Um, where, where did I go? Okay, and you already know how to make artificial elementals. Do you? Do you guys know? So, it's really interesting. It is really, it's a very intricate ritual to do all of this. So, an artificial elemental combines the force of a particular, uh, particular element uh, with a will or a direction created by yourself. Thus, if uh, two of your friends were having a disagreement, you might wish to send them a bit of elemental water to cool them off. Okay. Here. Oh my god, I need to bring my plants inside. They're going to get killed. Alright, here you are combining an element water with a purpose. Calm friends. Perhaps you have a boyfriend or girlfriend who, to your mind, is not amorous enough. So, sending that person some fire element to increase their ardor purpose might do the trick similarly. If you are a manager with a lazy employee, huh, sending some fire element to increase the employee's productivity, which is the purpose, could be what is needed to encourage the employee. So an artificial elemental also has a type of rudimentary consciousness, or a sense of purpose. This is what you instill in it, as it will be ex explained. So yes, you do instill life into the thing that you are creating. So, uh, much as a cruise missile will move around objects in order to find its target, so too will an artificial elemental discover ways of achieving the goal you give it. Perfect. So, this means the amount of e elemental energy you give it may not be equal to the task you assign it. So, if the energy is too little, the artificial element will not succeed in achieving its goal. So, if you give it more elemental energy than it needs, and do not tell it how to discharge that excess energy once the goal has been reached, an artificial elemental can become an unthinking and sometimes uncontrollable um, elemental force, sending out its undirected energy at anything and anyone, including its creator. Therefore, when making an artificial elemental for a particular purpose, you should pay close attention to the following rules. Alright, so I haven't even gotten to this part. Wow. Alright, so, there's like four rules. So, one, uh, you should have firmly in mind what you want the artificial elemental to do. We all can do that. Two, you should not have the artificial elemental affect another person without that person's permission. Right. In the above situation, A, employees technically give approval for managers to affect them to encourage their productivity. Okay, that makes more sense now. B. The person who has already, wait, the person was already a boyfriend or girlfriend, and thus what you would be doing would be strengthening, would 
to be strengthened in something already in existence. You are not affecting a new or unknown person. Hmm. So C. You are not affecting that out the outcome of the argument, merely calming the emotion emotions associated with it so that the two can uh, more easily settle the differences between them. Makes a lot of sense, it does. So three, since this is a type of gray magic, you must first perform, perform a divination to see if the outcome of the magical act would be a positive or a negative. So, four, as part of the magical process, the artificial elemental must be given the command to disperse all energy with no harm to no one when it, when it achieves its goal or by a certain date and time. All right. So this seems very, very easy and very quick, and but it's not. This is very complex. All right, so ritual for the creation of an artificial element. All right, so I will blog this, definitely. But for the other ones, I'm not going to blog. You guys have to do your own research um, because of the dangers in evoking Baal or any other kind of entity that's going to, you know, possibly mentally disturb you. I don't want that to happen to anybody. So, step one, decide on the purpose and do divination to determine the outcome. If it is positive, proceed to step two. How do you know if it's positive or not? Exactly. Just use your cards. Use tarot cards. It's the easiest. Well, for me, it would be. Now, step two, you've performed your divination. Um, and we got a, yes, a, let's go, let's do this, let's get it on. Let's get on with our work. So step two, perform the opening by Watchtower. So, um, if you guys have this book, Modern Magic, yes, <clears throat> you guys know what that is. So step three, imagine that you are the element which you wish to form into an artificial element. So instructions for this are in an earlier lesson of this course. Hold your hands nine to 12 inches apart, palms facing each other. So now you're gonna imagine a little a bottle or a box between your hands Next, as you exhale, visualize all of the element you are working with going out with your breath and being trapped in the container between your hands. So do this until the container is literally bursting with elemental energy. So that could take a while. That could actually take a long time. Alright, now, uh, step four. Take your hands away and let the container float in, the f in front of you. Uh, pick up the tool associated with the element which you are working. So, the pentacle, the cup, uh, the, the uh, dagger, you know, wand, whatever. So, put the end of the tool against the visualized container. The end. So if it was your dagger, you'd put the end of it. The, the part you hold. <laughs> Alright, so, and then you're going to say, I hereby name the insert name. Go thou and do such and such. When you have completed this task, disperse and reunite with the name of element everywhere and harm none on your way. If thou hast not completed the task, thy task by date and time, then disperse nonetheless and reunite with the name of element everywhere and harm none on your way. Um, so mode it be, be on thy way. Now step five, you're going to perform the closing by watchtower. And the rite is actually ended. It seems very, very, very um, easy, which I'm sure it is not. I know it's not. So, now, this is, this is pretty cool, too. All right, now, just a few notes for this. All right, now, one, for a name, you can use anything. So, uh, it can be a common person's name or totally made up. So, however, it should apply to the purpose of the artificial elemental. Calling an artificial fire elemental water bear is not appropriate. <laughs> Two, you can add the name to the words of the right above. Thus, the above ritual can be expanded to include go thou name of the artificial elemental and do such and such. So, three, in, s in the space marked such and such, name the purpose of creating the artificial elemental. So examples include go thou and bring peace to my friends or go thou and bring greater adore to my lover, etc. Sounds easy enough. Where is it? Hmm. <clears throat> so four, when giving a date and time for the dispersion, it is best to give 
astronomical dates rather than dates invented by humans. So rather than saying Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m., it would be better to say when the sun is at its highest on the day of the next full moon. Happy full moon, everybody. <laughs> it is the full moon. So even the more complex... Wait. Yes. So on the next day of the Mar of Mars, when the sun is halfway between its highest point and its setting, would be good. So this last phrase means Tuesday, the day of Mars, at some time between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m., depending on the time of the year. So, lots has to be taken into consideration when you create an artificial elemental. So, five, um, although an artificial elemental has a type of consciousness, it is more alive than a computer. Oh, it is no more alive than a computer. Wow. Which, uh, with which you can play chess. Therefore, there is nothing ethically wrong with creating an imprisoned artificial elemental. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. So these are frequently used as protective devices. They may be put into something solid or something which is hollow, but sealed. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense. So this may be the source of a genie in the bottle myth. Hmm. Could very well be. So, to do this, you would change the second line of the evocation above to say... Go thou into this statue, vase, rock, etc., and do such and such. If you are using a vase or a bottle which can be sealed, leave it open until after you see or sense that the artificial elemental has entered the bottle. Hmm. We can actually create our own gins. Well, no, not really. We can't. In a sense, we can. So, okay, then quickly and se securely seal the container. So, um, an example of such a protective artificial elemental would be based on the element fire and would have the purpose of creating the fiery emotions of fear and paranoia in any who would seek to intrude without permission or honorable intent. Hmm. So that's, that's actually really, really interesting. So be sure to give it its dis this peril, dispersal, date and time. And if your container is hollow, open it at that date and time to allow the imprisoned artificial elemental to disperse. Hmm. Wow. That's pretty interesting. So we have part seven here. Um, I don't know if I want to go on with part seven yet or not. Hmm. I think we'll stop here at part seven. So, creating an artificial elemental. Where did I get this? So, alright, I will actually, I will blog that for you guys. The artificial elemental technique. Definitely. Because it's very interesting. I mean, what we can actually create is incredible. So. some coffee talk. Alright, thank you guys for, um, on my, oh, what is it, my, uh, public page, the recommendation. I didn't realize how many, the, how many people there were on there. Holy wow, thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. You guys are very awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Hi guys. All right. So, Marjorie, hi. How are you? All right. Crap. Missed you again. I will see you soon. Sorry. You are fine, my darling. You are fine. All right, Lady Witch. Hi. Bail is the way I always heard it pronounced. LOL. Though I love this grammar, I don't use this technique. I have never had a manifestation other than a human form, and have actually been laughed at when I asked about the other descriptions. Oh. Well, screw those people. Uh, though I don't believe for a moment that just having symbols around is in any way dangerous, if not activated, I agree that people who with no experience probably shouldn't have them around just to dwaddle with. No, they shouldn't. I agree. I totally agree. Lily Moon. Hi, darling. How are you? Alright, I'm sorry I would have... Uh, we was out of town and had to get back home before the storm, and shockingly, I got an apartment. My stepfather speculates 
by the 15th of next month. That is awesome. Ah, I should be able to move into my apartment, if not sooner, so thank you ever so much. I am forever in debt for all your help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Aw. P.S. My eyebrow wound is healing nicely. Funny, kind of always wanted a scar on my eyebrow, and here I am. That's what I'm getting for wishing, I guess. Hello, I love you. Aw. You did not deserve that. That was terrible. That was terrible. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you. John Hirsch. Janelle has been reading the riot act to me all morning. Fun, fun. Who's Janelle? I don't know, Janelle. John Hirsch, you know me. John Hirsch. Sorry about not resigning, but I slipped back off the wagon. You're okay. Dark Prince Lucy. Mr. Mr. Dark Lee. Damn, missed it. You're okay. Chocolate Sunday, excellent video, my love. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Alright, Netheria Fade, sorry I missed you. You're okay. Sheila Nagel, damn, I'm slow, missed it again. You are okay, I promise. Marjorie, sorry, took a nap and missed you. See you next time, Ryan. <laughs> you guys are fine, I promise. Alright, Lily Moon, will I... Unable, I'm unable to talk to the chat board thing. Would not come up for me. It should come up for you. It really should come up for you. The chat. <clears throat> Within a, I, are you doing it on a, on a phone? If you're doing it on a phone, I don't know. If you're doing it on an iPad, it should definitely be popping up. Alright. Sheila Nagel, you must have a fan going because the stuff is moving. I did, yeah. I had a fan. My fan always moves and the windows open. Or the fan's always on. Um, that was just kind of to see who comes up here and gets in my stash. Alright, Alanate, Ernator. Hi! Thank you for clearing up the difference between evocation and invocation. You are very welcome. Marjorie, my sincerest apologies. I'll see you next time. Sorry, you are fine. Oh, Jen, Zach. Well, so far, Josh wanted to take a break, and I've decided just to let him go. <laughs> he felt that there wasn't much left between us. Definitely a lot of change, lol. Starting brand new, my heart hurts, but I know I'm strong. You are strong. Aww. And maybe it's for the best. I mean, it could be for the best. It really could. Aww, I just don't want to see you hurt. Alright. JJ Scar17 Willows. Hi, love. My little sister says your name as Wyan. Aww. Yeah, a lot of people do when they're little. And says you're a superhero. Aww. Oh my god, I can't wait to spoil you guys. DJ Scars Willows. Hi. I had fun asking you questions, Ryan. I wish I could have saw Ganny and said hi to her. I do too. I wish you guys could have actually literally met her in person. That's, that sucks. Hmm. Jen Zach, I don't understand why it didn't show me you were going live. I have the bell on damn YouTube. I think there's updates going on. I really do. So, alright, uh, David Kublin, hello, shout out, Jason Morris, shout out, um, I can do Scorpio for June, um, it, it's gonna have to be a regular tarot reading, it would have to be a personalized tarot reading for you, so if that's what's something that you would want, um, just send me an email, r-y-a-n-j-e-s-p-i-c-h at gmail.com, so, um, Logan Show, hello, Jaden, I was rev revising and missed today. Damn, you're okay. You're okay. Uh, Eerie Covenant, hi. Hi there, nice work. Thank you. Alright, um, Jade, hi love. Um, Dr. Stoner, hello my darling. Anika, um, Will Tunechi Jr., hola. Truth be told, hello my darling. Um, hi Kim. Hex Ogin. Hi my darling. Soul Therapy Tarot. I love that. I love that. Jessica Andrews. Hi darling. Uh, Witch of the Black Rose. Jasper Quinzel. John Hirsch. Megan Tarot Music. Roth 708. Carlos Bays. Hello. Marcella Mendez. Hi. Hi, my darling. How are you? Snooky. Hello. Hi, Madaria. I love you, my sisterly. 
Goth medley, hello. Um... Ooh, who am I missing? Madame Sophia, I love you so much. I think it's a Conjuring movie night. I really do, I don't know why. But yes, big time Conjuring movie night. Shaw Ra Harris, 2009, hello. Bill O'Reilly. Alright, I think you're gonna like the video. These past videos. <laughs> And definitely, because it is definitely within the realm of, obviously, ceremonial magic. So, Amanda Long, hello. Alright, guys. Well, I'll see you live here soon. Oh, my God. A crazy, crazy day. So far. So... Alright guys, happy full moon. I hope you guys have a great day, a great night. Go dance naked out to the full moon. That'd be amazing. Amazing and fun. Books are on their way. Still. They're still in transit. So, um, our postal office does not count mail anymore. And our closest city doesn't count mail. So, whatever comes to me goes to Fort Wayne first, just a couple hours away. So it comes, it, it, it gets delivered here, but then it goes to Fort Wayne, and then it comes right back. So, because nobody around us counts mail. So that's what's taking so long, so I finally figured it out, but they are coming. So, alright guys, um, I hope you enjoy. So we'll go on with part 7 tomorrow, or whatever part we were on. And see what we can what we can do. So, all right, guys, I love you all very much. All the way from Venus. Ouch. All the way back down. And I love you all, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. So, and a happy full moon. Soak up all of those amazing Celine energy. So, all right, guys, I love you all, and thanks for watching.